Hi guys! How's everybody doing? By the way, I am joined by the wonderful Lexi from Books with Lexi, of course. She is linked below. At first, I didn't have you linked, but I linked you. <laughs> so, she is linked. She's got a Patreon. She's got her own book club as well. And she does a freaking boatload of sprints. And I mean that in the best way, because I wish I did as many sprints as you. <laughs> it's like so impressive how much sprinting you do. Yeah, it's I, it's my way of hanging out with friends. I know, I love that too. I think sprints are so much fun, and I'm so glad. I basically discovered them because of you, basically. If it wasn't <laughs> for you, who knows if I would love sprints as much as I do. <laughs> but guys, just to remind you, we are not here for sprints today. No, no, no. We're here for something a little less fun because it's a dark book we're talking about today. We are talking about do 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 gone to see the river man an extreme horror book a disturbing horror book many people say remember lexi how we were talking about how ollie from criminali guys if you haven't checked out his channel check it out but our friend ollie he was like oh maybe i'm just jaded because this book didn't phase me and i was like yeah maybe and me and lexi were like yeah maybe but i am so messed up because i was like when i was like this is disturbing but it's not the most disturbing thing ever oh god I think it had very disturbing parts, but, like, the entire time I was reading it, I wasn't, like, having a physical reaction. Yeah. I mean, I feel like, guys, by the way, before we get into everything, there will be spoilers. And also, this is, of course, a book club meeting. That's why there is spoilers. And it's for my book club, the Midnight Book Society. So thanks to everyone who read it along with us for the book club and anyone who just happened to have already read it and who is here thank you for joining us tonight either way or after the fact if you're watching afterwards but you know for me personally i just thought it was it was disturbing but i've read and again this is a spoiler so heads up everybody i've read things with incest before it was more sad and horrible versus it was disturbing but it wasn't the most disturbing thing i've ever read just because I've read a lot of books with that element in it. Uh, there was other parts of the book that was disturbing to me too. Just Lori's mentality as a whole, as a character, was disturbing. Guys, make sure you shout out your ratings below. Um, and I'm dying to know your rating, Lexi. Are you going to reveal your rating? Yeah, I can. Um, yes, tell us, tell us. I So I finished this today, and then I immediately fell asleep until... <laughs> Half an hour ago. Oh um, my god. <laughs> it was an accidental long nap. Um, so I think I'm settling on four stars. I gave it a 3.5. I liked some of the writing, but like other things I wish were a little bit more expanded upon. Like the river man, I felt like it was so quick. Like there was a big journey to get there. Then we get kind of like some trippy scenes but then it just feels like it culminates so quickly. Like all of a sudden after the river man scene, the thing with Abby and Lori happens. And then all of a sudden Lori's free to go rush home and find Edmund. Yeah. Bowser. You gonna come Bowser. already? He's digging on the bed over there. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Always getting into trouble. He really is. Mm -hmm. So guys, yeah. let's see what everyone thinks in the chat. By the way, Sherry wants me to rap. I once read a book for a book club that was given by the wise Kelsey Kringle. This book was unlike any other. Oh boy, did it give me a tingle. 
<laughs> was, that was more like hip poetry than a rap. Like, <laughs> for me, like the way I read it. But anyway, we've got Michelle from Michelle's Library here. Everyone check out Michelle's channel. Hi, Michelle. By the way, I scoped and I was freaking peeping at her, like good, not at her. At her, <laughs> <laughs> at her Goodreads rating. So I know she liked the book because she said, yeah. I feel like such a bad person for giving this five stars. Yeah. I love that review. I think it's epic. Dawn is here. Hi, Dawn. By the way, hi, Sherry. I love your rap. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or poetry or, or whatever you want to call it. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> I love that. That's my favorite line is the last line of the rap is my favorite. We've got Amy here who I also scoped out her rating, which I knew she liked it already from the Discord, but Amy did give a nice review on Goodreads. She gave it a five star as well. So lots of people like this book, but I do think this book is kind of divisive. Guys, shout out in the comments what you did like, what you didn't like, and why. And we will kind of break it all down. You know, obviously, Lori is a terrible character in terms of her actions, her thoughts. I mean, really despicable. I think as a character, she was pretty well developed. What, what do you think about Lori, Lexi? Uh, she was terrible. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just think it was it was very um interesting to be in her head and like just her thought processes like oh my god those are what are you doing no those are cat treats oh don't eat the cat treats i don't know where these even came from i don't want they were up there sorry to derail things um, it's fine <laughs> they were on top of the, the bookshelf and i guess one of the cats winston got up and got them down so bowser just found them also i didn't you know alone i didn't know that they made those for cats my dog loves those we have to spell it out because if he hears it he'll be like oh <laughs> he'll go crazy yeah these are also um so relevant to the book right um, i know right they're <laughs> dental treats for cats <laughs> Still, yeah, it's a dental treat for dogs too, but that, maybe uh -huh. that's why he's going after them. Like, cause he's yeah. like, this is, should be for me. Yeah. <laughs> um. Oh wait, there's more to the rap. It oh. was about this young psycho named Lori. Her thoughts made me sick with worry. She. She stuck her hand in the chest, and it came out all wet. Man, this Lori is not the best. Best chest. I get it. <laughs> Am I good at doing slant rhymes? It's like, you know, where it kind of rhymes, but not really. By the way, speaking of Lori, Amy says she hates Lori. Yeah, I think that was the uh, point, though. Yes. If you liked Lori, I'm sorry, but you maybe need to get some things checked out. <laughs> yeah, that's <what> it <laughs> Like, who would really, like, relate to her and be like, yeah, I can yeah. see why she loves Edmund. I really, really relate with her. Yeah, like, I think... If you like her in a way that she was interesting, that's valid. But if you like her just as a person. Yeah. I mean, to me, it makes sense why she was so obsessed. Like, as the story progresses yeah. and we get to learn more and more about her, I was like, okay. She obviously feels like somewhere within her. Not mm -hmm. really that deeply hidden, by the way, because it's kind of, like, pretty yeah. relevant, pretty uh, prevalent in her head. She is just as depraved as freaking Edmund. Yeah. I'm really surprised I'm remembering so many details concerning I read this at like the very beginning of January. <laughs> I should have waited. I know. I I just finished it. Like I read it yesterday and today. I know you were telling me or you were telling the Discord, I kind of saw you comment in there how you you were making faces during Kaylee's sprints and people yeah. were like <laughs> Michelle looked up one time and laughed at me. Like <laughs> she looked up as I was making a face. And uh, yeah, it was it was interesting to read it live. I have got to go back and check out your facial expressions. Hi, Halco. How are you doing today? Secrets Reads. Secrets Read is here. That is a tongue twister. Hi, how you doing? She's got a great channel, by the way. Check out her channel. Her bookshelves are awesome. <laughs> Katrina. Hi, Katrina. I feel like I haven't talked to you in years. I was just telling Lexi before we started. It feels like it's been years since I've been on a live stream with her, and it's been only two weeks, but it feels like forever. I know. Also, Katrina, I feel like, is kind of the one that started this within, like, this book. I feel uh, yeah. Like she, 
like she is the reason a lot of us wanted to read it even well, though she told us not to <laughs> she was like i'm scared for you guys <laughs> i was like i i know luckily i'm demented as hell apparently and don't get phased by anything <laughs> Like, let's not talk about how I'm a psycho, apparently, and I'm all like, la 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 la, just reading this book like normal, with no facial reactions. Yeah, I I used to think that I didn't make faces when I read, but I think I probably do and just didn't realize it until I was on, like, camera and people could see me. Um, but, yeah, I mean, like, there were some disturbing things, and this is my first extreme horror as well. Um, but I think it was more disturbing psychologically than like gross things happening. So, so that's you why do, I you think there's more psychological going on than gore, for instance. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Did the gore bother you? Because you know, since you said it's your first extreme, like how did you feel about the violence, the blood level? Were you okay with all of that? Or was it like kind of almost too much? No, I was fine with that. That's Bowser! You're making <laughs> very difficult. Come up here. Um Come on, yeah, Bowser. <laughs> That didn't bother me. Um, I feel like sometimes I've read books that have body horror in general and people are like, oh my God, this was so hard to read. And I'm like, I forgot there was body horror. So <laughs> for some reason that doesn't like, that's not something that really sticks with me a lot. Um, so it didn't, don't show on your butt. <laughs> It's okay. My dog shows his butt too. Sometimes he'll turn around on the sofa and it'll be like right by me. And I was like, get away. <laughs> I like how you're you're blocking it. You're I like, no need butt. to censor him. <laughs> Hi, cool gamer, as we're talking about dog butts. Um, <laughs> Hannah is here. Hi, Hannah. Just read this yesterday, so it's fresh in your mind. That's awesome. Hi, Crystal. Love you, Crystal. Uh, check out Crystal's channel. Hannah yesterday messaged me. I was like, is Cirque Berserk extreme horror? Because I don't know if I'm ready for extreme horror. And I was like, no, it's not. And I was like, I haven't read extreme horror, but I'm starting one today. And she goes, oh, what is it? And I told her and she immediately bought it and read it. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> but you just said you don't know if you can handle it. And this one's way awful. worse than Cirque Berserk. I mean, yeah. Like, yeah. Worse. Oh, gosh. Katie, hey. I didn't and will not be reading this book, but I am here to be entertained. Yeah, I don't think the book's for everyone. I do think that, you know, people who are on the periphery who are like, should I read this? Should definitely look up trigger warnings. Yeah. Because I think it could be problematic for some people for sure. Hi, Come Melissa. On. So glad you're here. Come on up. Yes, the famous Channel 30 broadcaster is here. Yes. <laughs> I love when you're here. Thank you for joining. Everyday Life with Cat is here. Hi. I'm so glad you joined. Everyone's welcoming Channel 30. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Annie. How you doing? Jeff is here, too. Wow, there's so many people in the chat. Oh, my gosh. Thank you guys for being here. Hi, Lindsay. It wasn't super disturbing, just one part was ick. I do yeah. agree, and again, this is a spoiler, guys, so if you did not read it and want to, this is spoiler territory right here, right now. Uh, the incest. I think that part was so gross, and how flippant and mm -hmm. uncaring and unempathetic Lori was towards the whole thing. Oh, yeah, he won't eat. Oh, like, oh, well. Like I know. I know. Her... Mm. Mm. She was freaking cold. Cold as ice. I mean, yeah. horrible. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I had to wear, like, goofy earrings today. I was like, we need something light for this dark book. <laughs> like, so it's Tiny Toon Adventures earrings, which How's is old can you not? <laughs> Come on. Come oh, on. he's getting in trouble. Come I on. only read through chapter two. Here for the ratings and all the spoilers. I still plan on reading it this week. Oh, I'm sorry. I just spoiled one thing. But you said you're here for the spoilers. Dawn says five stars. Wow. What did you like about it, Dawn? Uh, why did you give it five stars? I do have some good re reviews up. I was going to read Amy's. If that's okay, Amy, I was going to read yours and put you on the spot. I love doing that with Amy for some reason. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> it's always Amy. I know. <laughs> Maybe it's because I love her. That's why. Would love to join in, but it's midnight and I've been on the gin. <laughs> love to you all. Thanks, Arlene, for stopping by <laughs> on the gin. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that means just drinking, right? <laughs> I think it's so. It's a, a British way of saying that. Bowser. 
I like how you're, it's like you being like Bowser. <laughs> it's like a, a verbal way of saying, uh uh-uh, uh, I'm watching you. <laughs> Amy says, I definitely don't think it's the most disturbing book ever, but that doesn't mean it's not disturbing. I agree. Mm-hmm. Even though it wasn't the most disturbing book ever for me, I did think it had disturbing parts. I did think overall the writing style was pretty decent. Like mm-hmm. I said, there were some gripes I had with it, um, especially towards the end. And some things that I'm like, I'm not sure about this. I'm not sure about that. But overall, like there were elements that I did find to be off-putting and disturbing in ways for sure. Sherry says five stars. (laughs) I'm trying to like say it as if she, as she typed it. (laughs) I hope it did a good job. Five stars. It seems like you were singing it in that inflection to me. To me, the incest wasn't what was so disturbing in itself. It was the way that Lori was written to be so complacent and uncaring in her mindset around it. I agree, Amy. It was not like just that there was incest in itself. Because, you know, books like, and this is not a sport. This is such an old book. And it's pretty much everyone knows. Flowers in the Attic. Oh, yeah. I haven't read that. And I know that. Yeah. And the book Pin as well. Um, You could just tell from even the cover of Pin, these this brother and sister, like there's something amiss. There's like this weird sexual tension between them. And I haven't even read Flowers in the Attic. And I know about you yeah. know, the incest there. So to me, it's like it's not like it's not in other books, but just Lori's attitude and her taking advantage of her brother, who was, you know, obviously going through all these hormones, didn't know what was yeah. going on. Yeah. You know, because I think a lot of times, like, even in things like Game of Thrones, there's incest, but it's consensual. Um, yeah. And this was very clearly not. Um, and she did not care that he was affected in any way by it. She's just like, you owe me this so I can learn how to have sex. Yeah, I mean, like, the whole mindset of, like, needing to learn just to best her sister, like, the whole, yeah, her whole yeah. mindset from an early age was just insane. Mm-hmm. And, uh, very, like, twisted. Michelle gave it five stars. What did you like about it, Michelle? <laughs> like I said, I read your little review already, but <laughs> I want to know the deets. Amy gave it five stars. Secrets Read gave it four. Andrew gave it one star lol uh talk up to us about how you disliked it andrew tell us what you just didn't like because we want both sides of the coin represented here i feel like we could all agree to disagree as long as we do it in a respectful way to each other that's perfectly okay always okay melissa gave it four stars Lindsay gave it a four it wasn't as disturbing as i expected but still very memorable and speaking of by the way i feel like a lot of a book it's like your expectations going in so like people like katrina being like i'm afraid for you guys and everyone being <laughs> like it's so disturbing don't don't read it and this and that that gives me like kind of an expectation going in so like when i'm reading i'm like going on and i'm like okay okay yeah it's disturbing but When's that part where, like, everyone's like, I'm so scared for you to read this? Yeah. So I think it was just the mindset, like, that everyone put me in before reading it. That makes sense. I don't think I went into this with too high of expectations. I think the reason that I gave it four instead of five, like, generally is because, um, one, there was a lot of time walking, and I'm like, okay, move on. Um, yes, and- I agree with that. There was a lot of walking. <laughs> yes. And then I also... Um, like, the ending felt kind of anticlimactic. Like, it was this huge buildup, and then we got, like, this character, Buzz. And he's, like, this is, like, the devil, pretty much, and, like, all this stuff. Um, and then you get there, and it's, like, such a short thing. And then there's, like, some maybe weird things going on, but, like, I don't know. It's not that I needed the whole thing to be explained but I think I needed a little bit more just with that like I feel like they could have cut out some of the time they were in the river yeah added more to like what I thought was going to be the big climax of the story um it just felt kind of like oh here you're dreaming that you're in this river and now you magically know that what you have to do is kill your sister (laughs) like I totally agree. I felt like that was so rushed. Mm-hmm. And I was like, what the hell? Like, this is what I've been on this whole journey for. Yeah. Um, 
I mean, I think the way the character, like, it was revealed how terrible she was and what she ended up doing, how that was slowly revealed was good. I mm -hmm. just wish there was less walking while that was happening and more, just like you, more at the shack, you know, and I know for a fact that you're okay with not having everything explained because mm -hmm. you and I have talked about this. You're okay with endings that leave you wondering a uh, little bit of an ambiguity there. You're okay with that. It's just that I feel like the same as you. It's not that I hate an unexplainable ending. It's just that, like, I wanted a little bit more, like, where does he come from? Is he, like, mystical? Or, like, just more with her interacting with him besides being in that's, this river. And then she just knows what to do. Yeah, that's my thing. It's not that I needed more answers. It's that I needed more time in that situation. Yeah. So, like, I don't care if I don't know like where the heck the river man came from what he is like anything but it just like i expected it to be longer yeah like and she's actually having interactions with him in the shack or whatever you want to call it yeah for way longer instead of just being in a river and then magically being like i know what to do yeah um also i guess since i'm kind of talking about why i gave it for um another thing which this I have issues with this in a lot of horror. Um, Kelsey and I were talking about it, but like the, like why, why, I mean, I get it with the backstory, but I don't, it's just the use of people with disabilities in horror that like makes me feel weird. It makes me feel weird too. Like I didn't know how to feel. I mean, like, you know, you could argue that it's just used as a device instead of, being yeah. a full well-rounded character even though i do think i think Lori was well-rounded i don't think abby was as well-rounded but then again and i, I mean, it, you know i do think part of that is because we were exclusively well not exclusively every once in a while we were in abby's head but i think that was only to show that like the powers of the river man were kind of infiltrating it wasn't to get her as a character so i think because Lori was uh can we curse? Yeah, yeah, we can curse. <laughs> such a piece of shit. Like, she didn't think of her sister as a real person. Yeah. And so I think that's why she wasn't as fleshed out, because her sister didn't see her that way. Yeah, her sister was just like, you're something that exists. You're an obstacle in my life. Yes, exactly. And, like, so the way she was written was almost like, that's Lori's idea. Yeah, which, like, sucks to read. But, like, also, this main character was so terrible that, like, it would have been odd if she was, like, super loving, especially knowing the backstory. And knowing Just, how she didn't even give a shit about what she did to her brother. Yeah. And she exactly. literally made die. I mean, she, she, she feels guilt, but it's more like not an empathetic guilt it's a guilt like oh shit i did this but oh like it's done i don't want to mention his name i don't want to think about it and i wish i could go through my life without ever thinking about it mm -hmm. so i think i mean once you see the length she went to i feel like it's no surprise the way she viewed her sister but still it, it is a weird thing it does feel a little weird reading it mm -hmm. I, I will say that i know you know, my friend uh, Crystal felt the same way. And I know Andrew felt like, you know, the disability wasn't really done very well, represented very well in the story as well, just like with Crystal. Crystal gave it a 2.5 stars. By the way, uh, more ratings here. Channel 30 gave it 4.5. I gave it a 3. This is a whole range of ratings right here. Wow, this is... I like the variety. In, uh, I think ratings. we have every rating here. I know, which is rare. Because sometimes people just love or hate a book, but now we've got a mid thing. We've got like almost, you know, a, gr a perfect rating. We've got perfect ratings. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. Gave it five stars when I first read it, but it does feel like more like a four star now, says Katrina. Yeah. yeah. Like at first I was, it never fully gripped me. I, mean, I yeah. was really into it until closer to the end. It just like, like even the walking sometimes was pulling me out of it. I did like when they met Buzz, uh, the yeah. guy um, with the shack who helped them in the boat. But damn, did they, like, Buzz, <laughs> poor Buzz. Uh, he totally freaking, he suffered for trying to be nice and do a nice thing for these people. Shouldn't have done it, I guess. Yeah. 
snapping. Oh, because I was rapping. Okay. <laughs> Coffee house snap. <laughs> Read this last fall and gave it four stars, says Melissa. Uh, what did you like about it? Spicy Cat Reads is here. Hi, how you doing? Hey, Gave it five stars as well because I was so grossed out, but I haven't read a lot of incest horror. Yeah, I feel reading, so that, reading that stuff, I was like, ugh. But like... I, I feel so gross that I was like, I've read a lot of it. That's so terrible, but I have. <laughs> but reading it was gross, I will say. And in fact, reading this made me... And I, I released it and I talked about it in the video, but... Like, Amy was like, if you don't find this book disturbing, like, what do you find disturbing, Kelsey? And because of that, I ended up making a top disturbing book list. And it's because books like The Girl Next Door by Jack Ketchum, oh, yeah. which is one of still one of the most horrific, hard reads I've ever gone through. Like, I still get angry about it. And also the same thing with Let's Go Play at the Adams. That book makes me so angry and upset. Like, I'm like, oh, I, I don't even know how to feel. I can't believe I read it. Um, I didn't know how bad, I knew how bad The Girl Next Door was going to be, but I didn't know how bad Let's Go Play at the Adams was going to be. And I read that one first. I didn't know, like, truly how bad it was. So I guess because I read those, it feels like it's hard for another book to reach that level for me because mm -hmm. the things that happened were so maddening and horrific and just, like, it makes you lose faith in, like, humankind in a way. But so does Lori as a character. She makes you feel pretty bad about humankind, too. Yeah. Lori was a grade A asswipe. <laughs> and being in her head was the most disturbing part for me, personally. I could have done without the whole fever dream aspect, had a hard time following it. I kind of liked the fever dream, and I almost wanted more of it. Uh, yeah, I wanted more. More as well, yeah. I like the, um... Not literally. I, I liked the flesh on the walls. Other like <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, that was so like, gross. I thought that was well done. The the walls, but again, I just wanted more time in there. Yeah. Sherry is a writer. I love the rapping. Uh oh, I hope my stream is not. I hope our streams. Now, not uh, people were saying it to just refresh because no oh, okay. having issues. Okay, good. So, yes, yeah, sorry. Becky is here. Hi, Becky. How you doing? Oh, wait. Yeah, I... <laughs> so I was saying it felt like it forever since I talked to Katrina. I just talked to her on Saturday. <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> I didn't forget, but, like, Saturday feels like a year ago, too. That's I so made funny. a vlog, and the vlog was like, was this all this weekend? <laughs> like, I went to a concert. I did a live stream. I read, like, two trashy books, and I was like, was that really all this weekend? I watched wrestling for the first time in a while. And I was like, this is weird. I can't believe I did all this in, like, two days. <laughs> Lexi's face is always an emoji. <laughs> Agree. Agree. Uh, yeah. Also, just a meme. Like, I love that for you. <laughs> I just want a meme of that for, like, everyday use. It's, it's amazing. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> Sherry, will you make one? <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I didn't realize this was extreme horror. Oh my gosh. That must have been a shock when you're in the middle of it and then you're like, oh gosh. Do you want to hear something? I, yeah. I also vlogged this book. Um, oh, you not, did? Yeah. Um, I bought this from Pango and the, my copy is very clearly the person who had it before me <laughs> set it down like this for an extended period of time. And it is right after we find out about the incest. <laughs> and they were like, like, I'm over it. <laughs> so I don't know if they like ever finished it or what, but it was just like, because the whole time I was like, oh, I wonder what's happening around that spot. And then it happened. I was like, oh. <laughs> no wonder they stopped there. That makes sense now. Because yeah. I think you showed that to me before we both read it. Mm -hmm. And so I just thought someone set it down. But now that you mentioned it, I didn't even think they would have set it down after something upsetting. So that makes total sense. Yeah. That is funny. I can't wait to see the vlog. When are you going to release it? I don't know. I haven't been editing, so. Yeah, I have been slacking as well. Yeah, I haven't. <laughs> I'm not saying you're slacking. I've just haven't oh, been editing. Yeah. I haven't put out a video in over a week now, which I think is the longest it's been. Yeah, I think the last time it was over a week was whenever I had COVID in August. 
you know what it is. You're like on an editing hangover because of all that, all those uh, end of the year content and beginning of the year content you did. You were like releasing so many videos and that, that was, was probably fun. exhausting. Yeah. I'm not doing that again this year. Yeah. That's like a lot of pressure, you know, and then it burns you out. Yeah. Yeah. That's a whole other conversation. <laughs> Trust me, I know. <laughs> I kind of feel like I was doing really good for a while, and then it's only been five days since my last edited video, but I was just like, I'm I'm dead. <laughs> I'm totally dead. Michelle says, the body horror wasn't bad. It was the psychological stuff for me. I totally can see that. I, I kind of agree with that, too. Yeah, even from, like, page two, she was like, oh, I'm so happy I'm this guy's type, and you want to know how I'm his type? He killed 20 people that look like me. And I'm like... What? Like, what is wrong with you off the bat? And also being jealous of someone else he's writing to. Like, dude, he's a serial killer. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. And then, like, she's starting to find out. Like, I do like, something I did like was how she justified. Like, I just want to get the inside story. I'm just interested in, like, the, the mystery, the facts or whatever. But then she slowly is like, oh, shit. Like, do I love him? Maybe. Yeah, or do I'm I have like feelings? I was like, yeah. I do like how that was kind of revealed and, like, she was almost coming to the realization, like, well, I guess yeah. I am as fucked up, oh, pardon yeah. me, <laughs> as I think I am. It was, like, very clearly uh, denial. Like, you could tell from the beginning that, like, she was, she was very interested in him in a weirdly romantic way, which, like, after reading his letters... I know, gross. He Ugh. was so vulgar. Like, what was there besides the depravity? Why did she pick him? Like, he's not even, like, an elegant serial killer in terms of, like, you know, they talk about, you know, some of the famous guys who captured women and how they were so great at being, like, uh, engaging and charismatic. This guy was not, Edmund was not charismatic at all. No, he was disgusting. I know, like, his letters were so vulgar. To me, like, that was kind of puzzling. Like, why'd she pick him? Yeah, those were almost the grossest parts for me to read. Yeah, me Actually, too. I think they were. Ugh. Just just the way he was talking about, like, being with her for the first time when he was able to. I was like, ew, you're, you're sick, no, you're sick. No, I hated that. I hated I mean, that so much. I know. Oh, my he, gosh. He was so it. crass. Meanwhile, I just said the F word again. Like, just like... It's, I'm crass. <laughs> Very no, I mean, not like Edmund, of course. <laughs> of course. I am not Edmund. I like how I have to, like, justify things. <laughs> oh, I'm so messed up. Crystal says things I liked. Lori going into the basement. Yeah, I did like that a lot. I thought that was well done when she finally realizes she has to stick her hand in. I know, and she's like, oh, the chest? And I'm like, oh, no. Like, ew. And it was all black? Oh, that was sick. Yeah. Had me on the edge of my seat, said Crystal. I liked the scenes with the river man himself. Good imagery there. I agree. I just wish there was more. Like the yeah. dual timeline. I did like the dual timeline, too. I thought that was done, because sometimes it's confusing, but the way he did it was not confusing. Yeah. He did it in a very logical, very easy-to-read way, yeah. for instance. Uh the psychological was the worst of it, I thought. Yeah. Jennifer's here. Hi, Jennifer. So glad you're here. Things I liked. 404, error not found. LOL. <laughs> yeah, Drew. You're so amazing. <laughs> I, I just love the way he writes and types and talks about things. Uh, psychological horror really works for me. People can be the scariest thing on the planet, in my opinion. I will me say too. I do get more affected by this type of thing versus monster or creature features. Or Yeah, a lot of my favorites are psychological horror. Me too. Because, you know, I feel like with a creature feature or even an animal attack, like, you can suspend your disbelief and, and think it could happen for an animal attack, not a monster feature as much. But in terms of animal attack... But, like, it's not likely. It's not as easy to buy into as, you know, people are really the scariest monsters, in my opinion. And when you see that in a book, then it just kind of brings you back into that realization. And you're like, no, please no. <laughs> Why? So, yeah. I totally agree, Sherry. Uh, Crystal, when that door shut on the stairs, I thought the book was going in a different direction. Yeah, like, when she's down there with the body and she has to put yeah. her hand in. And uh, I didn't think it was the sister closing the door. No, and that was, like, the very beginning of when it was clear that, like, there was some sort of, like, magic or something happening. Because 
I mean, well, according to Lori, who knows what to believe with her, but like her sister was never any, like anything close to being like aggressive or like whatever, you know? So or mean spirited. And then all of yeah. a sudden on this walk, she starts to be completely opposite of how she had yeah. been for years. Yeah. So definitely when you realize what kind of chest the key was in, loved it. Yeah. That was, I did like that part a lot. Cirque Berserk is so much fun compared to this. Oh, yeah. yeah. Completely yes. different books. Completely different. Oh, my God. Hi. How you doing, Vanessa? Uh, That's what gets under the skin and sticks, uh, says Amy. Yeah, she agrees with Sherry. I totally agree as well. This book is the most beautifully written book to be as disturbing as it is. I did like some of the, the language used, but, you know, I, some things I would have changed in terms of the writing style. I'm not someone that reads for nice writing, generally, so. Yeah, I don't usually either, but, like, I feel like books like this book, Geek Love, which is also disturbing because of the way the characters are written and how the characters think, I feel like that's a lot more beautifully written than this, per se. So it it just didn't reach the level of beautiful writing for me as, like, something like that, which really sticks out in my mind very vividly as, like, such a beautiful uh, book in terms of the way it's written. But Amy agrees with Jennifer and says, yeah, I, she thinks it's beautifully written, too. In fact, she, I'm looking at Amy's Goodreads review over here, and it says, It was a very hard story for me to read, but a memorable one. I love the writing so, so much. The author did an amazing job at putting us into the mindset of our main character and having us see the world through her perspective, as messed up as it is. I felt like I really knew Lori, and she is honestly one of the most hated characters ever. But she was supposed to be, and the story was like a car wreck I couldn't turn away from. Compelling and horrible, and emotion-inducing, and brain-searing and incredible. And it looks like she put it on Faves of 2023 shelf. <gasps> I didn't wow. realize that. Wow, Amy. Now I'm going to peep on your shelf. <laughs> shelf I, I gotta stop saying i'm gonna peep on people it sounds really weird i'll just use peep as like y'all are my peeps which i like better or i love to eat peeps like you know obviously yes i do the candy obviously everyone knows this <laughs> most everyone watching her brother slowly waste away while she continued to practice was yuck agree yeah, yeah. just she was so cold just to reiterate the incest is what got me, and then the eating disorder, and she didn't care at all. That's what got me. I know. Just like she was so flippant about the entire thing. Yeah. Yeah. Ugh. I just can't believe, well, I do believe why he didn't speak up, but it's just so sad that, like, the parents, like, imagine the parents, what they went through when all of this happened. And, um, do you remember if their parents were still alive? I was end. literally just going to, I was going to ask about this because it says that, that she multiple times said that um, Abby was her only family alive. Oh, okay. But I don't remember them dying. I don't, I don't think know. it's ever mentioned how they died or what happened. Yeah. I mean, I think another, this is terrible, but I think another part that would have been even as disturbing was from the grief, her parents like, you know. Yeah did something and they're not there they're dead after that yeah. i think that could and then Lori's still not caring like imagine how terrible that would be too but yeah i don't think it's ever said unless i'm wrong guys does anybody remember mm -hmm. if she ever mentions what happened to her parents i can't remember because i'm also reading another book where um the main character's parents are not alive anymore and that the situation in that keeps coming into my brain um yeah so and i don't I specifically remember it's been so long like i just want to know if Maybe we missed it. Like, maybe me and Lexi are not remembering. Like, she had, like, something that she said where it said what happened to them. But, like you said, I do think they're not alive. I just don't know if we know the reason or not. Yeah. Because they don't seem that old to have no parents. Like, they're adults, but they don't seem, like, super old to where their parents would definitely be passed away. Yeah, I, th I think there was maybe mention of, like, the mom like really struggling like mentally after it but i can't remember if there were any like details given yeah i don't think there i don't think there was unless i'm mistaken the past stuff was so disgusting and sad yeah crystal's like i didn't like many things but i do appreciate that you said the things you liked and it's okay that you didn't like things like i always preach 
it's perfectly okay to agree to disagree about a book. We all have our own things in life that we bring to reading a book that flavor our experience. And I think that's valid. I think that's perfectly normal. And there's nothing wrong with that at all. Um, same thing with Andrew. Like, it's totally okay that you're being a Debbie Downer and you didn't like the prose. That's perfectly fine. That's what, you know, that's why not just reading, but all forms of art and stuff are subjective. Not even sure why I liked it so much. I mean, it was sick, but I've never read anything like it before. Totally understand. I do think it's it's somewhat unique for extre for something that is labeled extreme horror. Usually extreme horror, it's like schlockiness. It's like gore, gore, gore. And the story is almost always secondary in an extreme novel. Um, it's usually, I do think there's a difference too between disturbing and extreme. Now this book is labeled as extreme. I think it's more of a disturbing, less what I consider to be an extreme book. Extreme to me just means like tons of blood, tons of gross stuff. Um, yeah, but I, I also know. think if this wasn't labeled as extreme, the wrong people would pick it up. Yeah, it yeah. It would be a problem. <laughs> I, I agree with you. I'm glad it's almost labeled that way so that people who are like, I don't even want to go that direction, don't pick it up because yeah. it could be a problem and um, hard for some people. Four stars for Jennifer. That's a good rating. I read They All Died Screaming by Triana, and it was more wacky extreme horror, which really, to me, it's more, like, that's what I think of when I think of extreme horror is more wacky, gross, like, sick type of stuff. So it'd be interesting, Lexi, because I know you said this is your first one. If you read a different one, if you actually hate it because there's, like, no story, <laughs> <laughs> or if you happen to like it because it's more wacky or... It's not something you have to take seriously, per se. Because I know you like sometimes the weird things, but that's more with thrillers, not necessarily, like, with gore. Yeah, I think the most, like, I guess, gory book that I've read is Cirque Berserk. Um, but that's, like, also very fun. And, like, I don't know. Like, here's a good example. Like, um, Katrina just read this in her clown vlog, and I read this uh, last year what, what month? Oh, in February. So a year ago, um, I read Clown Flesh and so did Katrina. And Katrina made a good point. She said it's not really extreme completely, but it borders on extreme. And it's definitely just wacky. Like it's definitely just like got like a lot of violence and uh, gore and stinky liquids. She didn't say that, but I'm saying that it had a lot of like, <laughs> gross liquids and like I can't even describe it. It definitely, I think, borders on the extreme, but in a lighter less disturbing way if that makes sense kind of yeah. it's just interesting to see what people think is extreme versus disturbing do people think there's a difference guys what do you think in the comments do you think there's a difference are you glad it was labeled as extreme so people know maybe to be more careful about picking it up and also what books besides this one have disturbed you the most i want to know uh like lexi for instance what is another disturbing book that kind of made you feel like, you know, either grossed out, not grossed out, out as in extreme, but just, you know, off put. I think uh, it kind of, I don't know. I think Pen Pal like really disturbed me. Um, but that's another like super psychological one where we don't really know what's going on. And like, those are the things that kind of disturb me the most. Like, usually like the the violence and like, like slasher type things and stuff like that doesn't bother me. It's more so, like, what is going on in people's minds that, like, really freaks me out. Um, but also, I'm fairly new to horror. I've only been reading it for a little over a year at this point. Yeah. Um, and a lot of the horror I read is, like, traditionally published. Um, I'm, like, trying to get more into, like, indie stuff. But I feel like in traditionally published stuff, there's not as many like really disturbing things. I do agree with that. There is here and there, but I, I overall definitely kind of agree with you. You do find more of this in indie published mm -hmm. things or even old school, even though these were published yeah. back in the day, it was a different time. So yeah. people were like, whatevs, we're just going to throw out, like, you know, like I said, The Girl Next Door, that was published. And actually um, his book Off Season is more of extreme versus disturbing because that's more about um, cannibalism. 
but that had a really hard time being published traditionally and they altered completely what he wanted to do with that but it's not nearly as disturbing as the girl next door but both books are by yeah. the same author yeah i also think the last housewife has a lot of really disturbing things in it um that's that what i've heard i can't wait to read it <laughs> yeah that, <laughs> that one um is a lot to read um but that's still a lot of it is well there is like disturbing like physical stuff but um that also has a lot of psychological stuff in it as well because it deals with cults i uh you know i say i'm excited to read it because it's one of your favorites and i want to like do the whole testing out like <laughs> lexi's favorite books so that'll be fun that's why i'm excited not i'm i'm excited to be uh, like upset to buy things no not really yeah. yeah there's one scene in there that i just think about and i'm like oh, i wish i didn't read that <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh like it, oh. yeah i'm gonna it's... have to see if i could tell which scene i'm sure i will be able to tell I don't know. There's a lot of a lot of things in there. Um, but once again, it's not like extreme horror type of extreme. So. Right, right. Michelle says, I feel like even though it was disturbing, I couldn't put it down. And it just made me realize how awful people are. I do like a book that kind of sticks with you, even if it's in like kind of a negative way where you're like, this is a downer, like, you know, humanity, what have we come to? But I do feel like those type of books are not the ones you'll just easily forget. Yeah. You know? They have a staying power with you. Let's see, this one, like, I've got other books that are that for me, whereas this one wasn't that because I have these other books that are that for me, let's say, if that makes sense. That's such a bummer, Andrew. I love the prose. It pulled me in so quick, really sucked me into the head of the characters, even though I didn't want to be there. Yeah, I feel like the whole time I never forgot that I was in her brain. Yeah. Yeah, me too. It was very apparent, like, that you were there and reading her thoughts. And Andrew says, the treatment of disability was pretty bad, in my opinion. My thoughts haven't changed since the Discord chats, to be honest. I have read a fair bit of extreme horror, but I have liked very few entries. So you just don't think you like extreme, Andrew. What don't you think you like? I will say, it's funny, after I read it, after Ali read it, and after Juan read it, we all made videos, like, about it. Like, I think Juan made a video about why extreme horror doesn't work for me. But he did say that he thought Gone to See the River Man was a little bit better of an extreme novel in that it had, you know, it had good prose. It had good sentence structure, which doesn't sound like a compliment. Like, it, it had good sentence structure. But he was trying to say that a lot of stream, extreme horror is just gross out type of reads very trashy schlocky as i said earlier so i just think it's funny how the three of us made little videos being like we thought it was going to make us feel one thing or be one thing and it was another for us again it's just all subjective and it's kind of fascinating to see how people react to different things or react differently to the same thing i should say yeah. <laughs> that's really more what it is andrew's glad that you know Amy and others who enjoyed it enjoyed it. Well, that's nice, Andrew. Sorry that you didn't like it, though, but I understand why. I totally understand. Amy says, I think the only thing I wanted more from was the end. I wanted to see him kill her. Yeah. The, <laughs> yeah. I, I think another reason, well, this isn't like, I, like, I don't mind predicting things, but I kind of like the whole time knew that once I realized the direction it was going in, um, I knew she was going to kill Lori at the, or she is Lori, kill Abby at the end. And I knew that at the very end, Edmund was going to kill her. Like, yeah. So, yeah, I, I think it would have been like weird to end it with that though. Like if we watched him kill her, there would have had then to be. Then how do we end that. Yeah, yeah, like, where do we go after that? But yeah, as a reader, since you hate her so much, it would be kind yeah, of... Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. That makes me sound like a psycho. But, <laughs> but, but you know what I mean? I mean, it's the same thing Amy said. But, like, said in, like, the worst way. But yes. I I said it in the worst way, not you, Amy. But yeah, I, I did like the last line, I will say. Because, like, you know, how else could you have ended it? Mm -hmm. To me, it was kind of appropriate. Like, she kind of got what she was coming to her in terms of well, this is who you want to love. And she's like, will it hurt, darling? Edmund flicked the blade with his finger. Love always does. No, voice. The voice he gave him. <laughs> uh, just because I think he's a scumbag. That's yes. I, yeah. 
gross. Ugh. Just gross. He is so disgusting. The ending definitely needed more to it. Agree. Like, you know, we go on this whole adventure, and again, this is the big spoiler, or one of the big spoilers. We go on this whole thing. There's this whole tension with her and her sister, Abby. And then she kills Abby, and it's like a two-second thing. I push her. She's gone. Goodbye. Like, I know it's supposed to represent how little she feels that she could just do it, be over with, and leave. But I just kind of wanted a little bit more, like, maybe where Abby finally realizes, like, I don't know, what's going on, that her sister's really a terrible person. Like, it sucks that she comes out of the shack, and she basically is like, oh, I still love Sissy. Like, nothing's really revealed to her. I did kind of have a problem with that. Like, Abby gets glimpses of the truth and of her old, like, comprehension of things, but then is just kind of a sacrificial lamb, let's say. Yeah. Yeah. I have so many, like, back and forth thoughts about that because, like, I, like, you want more for that character, but at the same time, like, it wouldn't have made sense uh, with being in Lori's head as much as we are, so. That's true. Yeah, that is a good point. That it, I could see that. Uh, I agree, Amy. She needed to suffer way more <laughs> in terms of Lori. I, 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 it would have been yeah. nice to see some suffering, but yeah. <laughs> we just get a line. I also cannot imagine being like, yeah, you love me, so it's okay to, like, cut me up and... No. How do you even get to that mental state to where you're like I don't literally know. sitting there, someone's coming towards you, and she's not gonna scream because he didn't like the whole idea that the other girl was screaming and making a yeah. fuss. And so yeah. I guess she's gonna try not to scream. I'm just guessing. But how can you get to that point where you accept it? I don't know. She accepted way too many things. Like reading his letter, I keep going back to that, but like I know. How do you even get to this point where you fall in love with him? I don't know. (laughs) Because, again, like, I get that you think you're dark, like a killer. Oh, you're so deep, or whatever. You're so multifaceted. But, like, why that killer? There are plenty of killers. Yeah. Why that one? (laughs) I'm not saying that would have been any better had she was so terrible, but yeah. (laughs) Like, he's so, he's so gross. Yeah. The very end was super predictable, in my opinion. Not the Riverman, but that very last scene. I agree that was kind of predictable. Like Lexi said, uh, I totally agree. Was just typing out the same as Andrew. Hated the use of a disabled character in this book. Hated how Lori constantly complained about her sister. Like, she can't have a life because of her sister. Blah. And again, like, I know that, like, personal experiences color that. I totally... I, I can see, like from where you're coming from coming like feeling that way and I also felt weird about it and I felt like Abby could have been a fleshed out character more than what she was it was just it's weird I've got conflicting feelings conflicting thoughts on that completely and I could see where you're coming from a hundred percent a hundred percent I can't believe Lexi cursed (laughs) something lighter yes (laughs) (laughs) I feel like the sister is used as a metaphor versus being a fully fledged out character. I really don't think Triana has been around or talked to people with disabilities. I do think that is a valid criticism, but I could see what he was hoping to accomplish there. But it sucks that 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 was the way he was trying to accomplish it. Yeah. Isn't Abby disabled because of Lori? It's a minute since I've read it. Yeah, she was pushed over the edge, and that is why she she was born, you know, uh, not disabled. Yes, pushed her off a cliff, or let her... I, did she push her, or did she let her fall? I think Either way, she it's bad. Let, but... I think she let her fall. Either way, it's terrible, because, but I, yeah, I can't remember now. Because she um like raised her hand and just waved at her like it wasn't I don't I don't remember exactly but for some reason I feel like she was starting to fall and like Lori could have very easily stopped it and just like was like bye like I can't believe it details how she waved like how effed up are you she's I know that's why I was like like, like, that, it just stuck with me, yeah. Like, my bitch! Like, that's so terrible! Like, oh my god, yeah. who does that? I will say, yeah, that she, was... 
the wave was pretty bad for me. Like that part, I was like, yeah. wow. She didn't shitty. even pretend. I know. She was like, <laughs> <laughs> like, and how does she know that her sister one is not going to survive and two not remember? Like. Yeah, she if I'm that sister and I wake up and I can remember, I'm like, she waved at me as a freaking. I know she wasn't thinking about what she was doing, obviously, but like that's the first thing I would have said. So yeah. Lori shouldn't have waved if she wanted to try to get away with it and didn't know how it was going to play out. Yeah, whatever. So twisted, so terrible. From what I've read, I really enjoy the writing style. I'm glad that I'm here prior to finishing. It's preparing me. So far, it seems like I'm going to enjoy this book. I'm sorry we've literally spoiled everything big. I feel so bad that you're still here anyway. Lori was jealous of Abby since they were kids and wanted her to die when she pushed her the first time. The way she talked about Abby made sense because she had an extreme lack of empathy. I do yeah. see that too. Yeah. I am reading Sweet Audrina right now, and the talk about disabilities in that feels much worse to me. That is interesting. Crystal, didn't you read that? I haven't read it, so I can't speak to Sweet Audrina. I think that's a, a V.C. Andrews book, right? Does anybody know? I don't know. I think, Crystal, am I wrong? Isn't, isn't that one of the series? In Riverman, I think it was used to show that even though Lori caused the disability, it shows how little she cares about anyone else. They yeah, did was so dirty. Yeah. yeah they really did. Yeah. That's why I feel like it was sucky, like, representation, but also we were so in the character's brain that, like, it, would, it wouldn't have made any sense with everything else that was wrong with her if she was, like, good about it, you yeah. know? I mean, she caused it. Yeah. I don't know. Like, if she did have empathy for her sister, the whole thing is, like, I, I understand her not having empathy for her sister and complaining about her because it shows who she is. But, like, you know, what else could Triana have used as a character trait for Abby, uh, for Lori to show how bad she was? You know, what could she, what could he have used in the story besides, I think he could have used something else, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. Some other... Um, thing to show how terrible Lori was. I just don't know what that would be. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I understand not being comfortable with that because I felt weird about reading that too. Because they're not like, they're not traits, they're people. Like they're fully yeah. fledged people. And then Lori talking about her like such a burden. It's just hard when there's real people who struggle with that, you know? Yeah. Poor Buzz. I liked Buzz a lot. He was so nice letting them in his house. Being like, yo, I'll take the sofa. Y'all have my bed. Like, a oh, poor dude. And, and that then was after Lori was like, yeah, my boyfriend is Edmund, whatever his name was. And I'm like, I would kick you out. <laughs> if I know who, if I, oh, uh, no. Yeah, Buzz is just like, oh, you crazy. But he should have, yeah, he should have kicked her out of the boat right then and there. Like, we're going back. I don't care what you want. Like, I don't give a shit. We're not going. Poor Buzz. And then his foot gets cut off. That's sad. And also, that part disturbed me just that, like, Abby wanted that foot so bad. I understand the yeah. metaphor between his foot and the rabbit's foot. But, like, you know, weird. Yeah. I think that was kind of into the, like, her influence of the Riverman's magic, too. Yeah, that kind of showed you how there was more going on, um, Abby wasn't normal, like, her normal, usual self. Yeah. The Riverman was having some kind of effect on her. Mm -hmm. Like, she wouldn't normally be violent like that or want to, to have, a, like, a person's foot. Yeah. I also understand why people wouldn't like it. Yeah, me too, totally. Throughout the book, Lori talked about her grief, but it was clear that she had no idea what that even is. All you feel throughout is her jealousy and anger, entitlement even. Yeah, yeah. which she almost misinterpreted or claimed it as grief when it was clearly not grief at all. Mm -hmm. Katrina's like, Kelsey's hardcore. Like, I know, I'm so messed up. Like, <laughs> nothing affects me. I, <laughs> I'm the worst. Plus, a sheer, from a sheer believability standpoint, as someone who uses a cane daily, she is somehow hiking in the rain using her crutches even before the Riverman shenanigans. But I will say, Lexi kind of said that maybe even from the beginning, like, Lexi and I were talking about the believability of this. And Go ahead, Lexi. Like, say what you thought about it. Um, I mean, this is totally a valid thought. It, it definitely uh, is, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, but I just feel like early on, um, Abby was impacted by the Riverman. Like, 
as soon as they got there, she started acting different. So to me, like he was like impacting her in multiple ways. Cause he is just like magic. Who knows what? So yeah. like, that's why it didn't feel as weird to me to read, but like, also I totally get it. Yeah. I totally get it too. Um, but I could see, like, I can suspend my disbelief because of the idea of the supernatural, the magic. Uh, yeah. At least that, that is, like, could be my reasoning to where I can just let logic go out the window type of deal. What was the supernatural part of this book that I've been vaguely hinted at? Again, we don't really know who the Riverman is. We just know that he is supernatural, period. It's it's like he can see into someone's darkest, darkest desire. That's kind of what I got from him. He yeah. can tap into someone's, you know, dark aspirations, perhaps. I don't know. Yeah, it's kind of confusing because, like, everyone that goes and visits him ends up, like, committing terrible acts themselves. So it's, like, almost like he is making them <laughs> even worse than they were. Um, but there's no real explanation to anything. He's this, like, magic creature that lives deep in the woods. Jeez, I am so behind. So sorry, guys. I thought I was doing good with comments, and I just scrolled down like, holy crap. Sorry, guys. I'm going fast. I'm trying to go fast. <laughs> there is a lot to talk about. I think this was a good book club pick in that it is a book to discuss, like, in many facets and in many ways, and lots of emotions, lots of different thoughts are surrounding it, which I think adds to a rich discussion. And I love that everyone's being respectful, at least from what I've seen. I haven't gone really far down, but thank you guys for trying to be respectful to everybody and their opinions. I really appreciate and, and love that. And the same thing with my Discord. People were very, very nice in there, very respectful in terms of differences of opinion. And I love that. I'm very thankful for that, guys. Lindsay says, uh, same, once you've read Ketchum, American Psycho, Exquisite Corpse, I don't get as disturbed after those and i will say yes to all except the only one i don't have experience with the book is american psycho i do have experience with the movie but i know the book is like terrible in terms of the disturbing nature of the the main character's thoughts and stuff yeah, like I'm lexi not... like exquisite corpse is so gr like it's extra it's extreme even the name <laughs> Yeah, it's like there's crazy sex shit. There, <laughs> there is gross, like graphic violence crap. Like it's just disturbing, but it's also pretty sad because it takes a look at like the AIDS crisis at the height of like the fear um, towards homosexual people who had AIDS back then, and you know everyone's biases towards that in terms of like oh stay away. Um, so that part, like, it was definitely kind of taking a look at that and an examination at that time. But there's some gross shit in that book. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's one of the books that I think about that, like, made me, like, look away, have to take a break. That is one of the books. And spoiler, it was on my disturbing books list because it's truly disturbing to me in many ways. It's not just gross disturbing. It's like... Is that video right. out? It, it is, Yeah. I'm so behind on YouTube. I haven't even, like, because normally I'll go, I'll go through and, like, add things to my watch later, but I haven't even done that for the past couple days. Yeah, and I don't even know if I commented on your vlog where you were reading Sarah's books. Oh. It's with okay. that book. I mean, I, all I know is that I watched it, and I was like, I think I'm behind on it. Like, having told Lexi, like, or commented that I watched it. So ridiculous. So, please, don't. I'm the same way. I, I am also behind. Seeing ghosts in the wood, the river man being an embodiment of the devil, that might be the supernatural elements that we're hinting at. Yeah. Yeah. Abby was also possessed in parts. Yeah, I would say, I would think it's kind of like she was possessed. Or something about the river and the river man made her stronger physically and remember things and act differently. Yeah, that's how I thought of it, too. Yeah. Uh, seemed to get stronger and started to recover memories as they got closer and closer to the river man. So, like Lexi kind of hinted at i think the influence starts right when they get out the car right when they're at the foot of the path and once they decide to start going down that path it just ramps up as they get closer and closer and as they're more you know uh, dedicated to this trip and this journey <laughs> what about edmund said "Ooh, baby i want that i know <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't know that's so weird 
Lori is so scary because there are women in real life like her. I do agree with that. And that is something that I can't even fathom, like writing to a man like Edmund and being like, yeah, ooh, baby, like, like Amy said. I, I don't understand it. Yeah. Agreed, Katrina. Absolutely terrifying. We know Lori is a piece of shit, but one thing I get tired of is the use of disability to yeah. prove that point. It's just something that bothers me more and more. Yeah, and it does seem like it's used in fiction, like, quite a bit. Yeah, sometimes. I completely agree. I, I do agree with that. I think a personal pet peeve is the trope of supernatural shenanigans being able to overcome disability, something that always annoys me post-stroke. Totally understandable. Again, I think that's extra valid because of your life experience and uh, I can totally understand where you're coming from, 100%. The real scare is women like Lori. Yeah. This wh horror seems very literary. Was it? Uh, there's such a th Is there such a thing as literary horror? I think so. I think, to me, geek love is way more literary than this. In yeah, my this, didn't, this didn't feel, like, super, like, literary. Because I usually don't like those. I have read... Um, multiple like literary horror and um, I'm not usually a big fan but this didn't really feel like that to me what would you what books do you consider literary horror do you think uh, that you've read white horse definitely is oh yeah yeah I've heard about that one this one um this was a recent one that I read that was very much like that um oh what are some other ones I I haven't read a lot, um, and if I have, I usually don't keep them. Yeah, because I know you're not a big literary fiction fan, period, so even yeah. literary horror fiction wouldn't be your jam, necessarily. Yeah. Um, I'll look and see if there's any other I read, but that is definitely one. <laughs> His letters were the grossest parts, also that grammar. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he could not write. <laughs> Agree, Katrina, the capabilities of people are horrifying. Yeah, I also agree. There is there is such a thing, I thought this leaned into literary. Oh, so Amy thought it leaned literary. That's interesting. Yeah, it was maybe a little bit, but, like, not too much for me. Yeah, I didn't think it was, like, like I said, like, to me, the closest thing for me is geek love feels more... Hmm. Lori's self-esteem was incredibly low. I think she saw that he paid special attention to other women that looked like her. She felt like it's instantly he's he would instantly accept her. That's a good that is a good theory, Sherry. I do think that would align with her thought process. I also think she was trying to figure out her own issues through Edmund, then didn't really admit that she loved him until closer to the end. Yeah. Oh, Jennifer also yeah, go and ahead. Another, another uh, literary horror I just read was A History of Fear. Um, but I I do not recommend that one because it felt um, very offensive to me. Yeah. Like, like the point, I, I, I mean, it would be a spoiler, but like, ugh. yeah. I don't think I'd read it, but yeah. I mean... I'm just very picky with about um, things that lean to literary. I'm kind of picky about that for some reason. Yeah. Jennifer says, I still need to read Geek Love. It's on my TBR card. Yes, please read it. I really, I think it's such a, um, an in-depth story. And I love the main narrator of Ollie. She is fantastic. Uh, so Katrina is asking Amy if she's read other Triana books before. I know that Crystal has. Crystal, what have you thought of his other work? William says, so the imprisoned psychopath points the ge points the ge geographic location of the Riverman, who is a supernatural entity. Yeah, basically, it's like kind of where he used to live, and that's how he knew. Yeah, him. it's like a referral system, so yeah. you can only find him in theory if someone who has been there before tells you to go there and like tells you that you have to bring like, a certain item or something as, like, proof that you were sent by someone else. Yes, exactly. Wow, this is the only book on Amy's Faves of 2023 shelf so far. Wow, mm -hmm. that's hardcore. Brain searing is a great way to describe this book, Amy. Yeah, like, from when I read Amy's review, I do think it's a good description. Haven't read a, uh, other Triana books 
I added a bunch after this, though. I definitely will be reading more this year. Leaves live show chat to continue reading after listening to Amy's review. Good. <laughs> that way she's not getting spoiled even more. I want to read more of his thrillers. Amy, you got to read They All Died Screaming. It's freaking bonkers crazy pants. Oh, that kind of makes me want to read it. <laughs> Amy says, sold. I will read that next. Yeah, like, I'd love to read that next. Did you just sneeze? Yeah. Bless you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to make sure it was a sneeze versus a cough. Yeah. Sometimes people will hear me sneeze and they'll be like, um, hear me cough, I mean, and they'll say, bless you. I'm like, it was a cough. <laughs> but thank you. I do like the uh, phrase bonkers crazy pants. That's a great phrase. And Arby's. <laughs> I don't remember about the parents. Yeah, me neither. Lori is sent to retrieve something and take it to the river man. I don't think she ever mentions how the parents die, but she does say that 20 years have passed. Okay. Oh, yeah. I knew they were not alive, but I didn't know if that was. Yeah. At all. You'll never look at Arby's the same from that other Triana book. Now I want to read it even more. Yeah. <laughs> there was actually an SNL skit recently about Arby's where they were in the restaurant um, and people were watching the commercial for Arby's and they were like, how can you sell three roast beef sandwiches for $5? How is it possible? You go to the grocery store, you get a pound of meat. It's like $15. How are they selling three sandwiches with all this meat? And then he's like, because we have the beef. And it's in the narration voice. And they're like, but from where? <laughs> so I thought that that made me think differently of Arby's at the same time. <laughs> so I should read this book. That with SNL, I'll never look at Arby's the same ever again. <laughs> This book and Crossroads are tied for my favorite horror book I've ever read. Whoa! That's that's a really big statement, Sherry. Yeah. Wow. I want to read Crossroads so bad. That's on my 23 books to read in 2023. I'm reading it for my uh, 12 books from 12 friends because of Sherry. Oh, really? Oh, that's awesome. I know it's uh, got a lot of grief horror in it, so mm -hmm. there are trigger warnings for that book, too. Yeah. I'm eager to read it. I you know what I mean <laughs> when I say that. <laughs> Luckily, people who like horror know what we mean when we say these things, but I still yeah. feel weird when it comes out of my mouth and I say it. Yeah. Everyone's rating and thoughts are valid. I totally understand why people would hate this for a variety of reasons. Same here. Totally feel the same. Prisoner must have met the entity in that specific location or the entity somehow contacted him. It's, it's basically alluded to that he's met the river man, that Edmund has already contacted him. That, you know, he's such a bad person that he would have already, you know, s seeked, sought out, sought out. I, was say, I don't <laughs> think seeked is a word. <laughs> sought out the river man. Same. Extreme horror is like cheesy gore sex. Exactly. So not every book that is disturbing is extreme, in my opinion. I definitely feel like this book could compromise someone's mental health. Doesn't only need that extreme horror label, but uh, know your triggers type of label. Totally agree. The smells. I forgot about that for clown flesh. Oh my god, I'm so behind. What the hell? How am I just behind on comments? Because I'm slow as hell. I definitely think extreme is accurate due to the psychological element, but I was surprised that the gore seemed tame in comparison to others I've read, like Clown Hunt. I want to read Clown Hunt for sure. Clowns don't just smell like cotton candy. Not in clown flesh. That is <laughs> that is true. They do not smell like cotton candy. And like, you know, they don't bleed cotton candy. Like liquids ooze out of them. And it's, it's sick. But it's a great winter read. <laughs> Suffer the Children by Craig DeLouis really stuck with me. I haven't read that one yet. Oh, Craig yeah, DeLouis is the guy who wrote um, episode 13, right? Yeah. Suffer so the Children is on Scribd. Is that considered extreme? Suffer the children or episode 13? Suffer the children. Uh, I don't know. I don't know either. I started episode 13. I'm like 30 pages in. But then Garb August happened. And then I started Swan Song. So like I'm taking breaks. I'm trying to read a little bit at a time. My Dark Vanessa isn't considered a horror book, but one of the most disturbing things I've read. Also, The Girl Next Door. I would say The Girl Next Door is really high up there for me. I've not read My Dark Vanessa, though. 
The best extreme horror book that I've read is by Brian Bauer. I love his stuff. The most disturbing book I've read is hands down The Handmaid's Tale. I actually haven't read that. I would read that um, just to see how I feel about it. I know that it has a deeper meaning to it and like, you know, societal things that make it super disturbing. Yeah, I think that author is not the best. She's like made person some, in real life? Yeah, she's made some uh, not great comments. Oh, really? I didn't know that. That sucks. I find Clive Barker and Jack Ketchum stuff disturbing, impactful. Modern extreme horror, I tend to dislike. I understand what you mean. I do think, especially because there's uh, more easier ways to be published now in terms of people self-publishing that a lot of extreme horror just gets put out there and there's no there's nobody reining it in there's nobody really overseeing it let's say so i do think there's a lot of modern extreme horror out there that is just terrible stuff just to be terrible terrible in terms of like the content in it it's just terrible to be terrible i don't know what it's what is extreme, but this is where we talk things out, mess me up. Oh my gosh. I'm that about to read it. Had me like screaming because I, oh my gosh. That's my favorite book I've read this year. Really? Yeah. I'm excited. I'm reading it. Um, I think I'm gonna read it during the 72 hours in a haunted house. Yeah. Also one of the prompts is winter, right? Like something about winter on the cover or yeah, something. Yeah. Um, also it used to be on um Kindle Unlimited and it's not anymore. But the ebook is on Scribd. Oh, good, good. I might use Scribd then because I was like, no. When I when Katrina said it's not on KU anymore, and I was like, damn it. Yeah, I just found it on Scribd today. When you read Scribd ebooks, do you read them on your phone or can you read them somewhere else? You have to read them. You could see so you could wherever you can log into Scribd. That's where you have to read it. So you can't like read it on a Kindle Paperwhite. That sucks because like I hate reading on my phone, but I did do it for Pin by Andrew Niederman which I mentioned earlier about like incest and stuff that uh, I, it was only ebook on script. So I read it on my phone so I can do it if I need to. So I'll do it just to save some money yeah. for, cause I'm definitely reading. This is where we talk things out. That one's so short too. This is why we're behind. Cause we're just going on. Tangents. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's been so long since I talked to you and everyone. It feels like, I know, know. I know. as Katrina yeah. said, we just had a chat on, on Saturday, but like, it feels like a year. Yeah. But that one is a quick read. Yeah, I'm excited for that one for sure. And it's perfect because of the, you know, the readathon being 72 hours and I need to get through a lot. It'll be like the perfect choice. The lore behind the river man is that you take him a gift and leave with the violence inside you, then send another person to see him with a gift. And then it repeats and repeats. It's like a cycle, a cycle of depravity, of violence, of messed up shit, essentially. <laughs> Good one, Crystal. Handmaid's Tale was really disturbing when I read it because of what has been going on in reality in the country I live in. Yeah, I could see that being disturbing from what I know of the plot. Usually find literary horror or just literary fiction in general, the dark stuff, more disturbing than extreme horror because it tends to be more psychological, more, I would say, I guess, in my opinion, like realistic, believable type of thing. Gore doesn't bother me. Me neither as much. Yeah. Eye stuff with gore is the only gore that bothers me. But I, I like can still read it. Ears? Like ears? Yeah. Oh yeah, that's like, kind of gross. Uh, in Uzumaki, there's a scene that I was like, I, my friend was here and we were both reading and I kept disturbing her because like things are happening and I was screaming about it. <laughs> uh, I will say people like cutting their skin like off Oh yeah, that's gross. yeah. Not like just cutting their skin a little, but like like peeling their You're skin away. Yeah. Anyway, that freaks me the hell out. So that's the only two types of gore that freaks me out. But I can get through it. But it yeah. definitely makes me literally like go crazy physically. <laughs> gore doesn't really bother Crystal either. The only other book that has made me feel this way was The Last Housewife. Disturbed my own brain for my own reasons, I guess. Yeah. Ugh. Ugh. that'll be an experience when i go to read it can't wait to read that one sherry i'm gonna read it this year same here it's a bit of a mind f amy but so so good uh i know it made katrina i was gonna say i remember her saying it made her want to burn the world down yeah i was so mad the whole time i was reading it 
tell me why that's my favorite book of last year I don't know but <laughs> well because like I said books that make you feel things in a passionate way I think stick with you a lot more it, yeah. it's not forgettable it's something that is an actual true um like real reading experience versus something that you just read for fun that you might just forget in a week or two or in a year whereas the la- last housewife for you you'll be remembering it for a very long time because mm-hmm. it was a real experience for you because it affected you, et cetera. And I feel like I'm going to feel that way too, but we'll see. The ones that make a statement about the human condition and the boundaries that get crossed for what otherwise in society is menial situations where it's a make or break scare me so much. Same here. I totally get that. Oh, wow. That kind of made me curious about that one when I wasn't before. I'm guessing you mean about the last housewife <laughs> making her want to burn the, the world down. <laughs> yeah, buddy. I have not read Extreme Horror, but I did read Extreme Violence in the book The Five Fingers, particularly the eyeball scene. Oh, no, eyeballs. I better stay away from it. I don't want eyeballs. My my mom, eyeballs freak her out, too. I think I've said this before. <laughs> I used to just poke my eyeball in front of her on purpose. Oh, just, no, like Ace Ventura. Like, like I, I would just be like, hey, mom, look, and just poke my eyeball. <laughs> That's like, so mean. Uh, I forgot I did that. Oh, I love how you have stories of torturing your siblings and your mom. <laughs> You're like, this one time I just, I, I did this to my brother. <laughs> I'm like, They're all crazy. <laughs> I love it. It's perfectly appropriate for a disturbing book. <laughs> but yeah, that would freak me out, Lexi. Please don't touch your eye. <laughs> I'm not going to do it now. Good. I don't know. Maybe you're like, hee hee, Kelsey. I'm just going <laughs> to randomly just be like, Oh, no! I didn't, I didn't do it. I didn't do it. You're about to. No, I wasn't. I wasn't. <laughs> You're going towards it. No, I know, but I, not for real. Okay. Sorry for screaming. <laughs> I literally screamed. I was like, no. <laughs> apparently, I can read about way messed up things, but go towards an eyeball. I can't handle it. Apparently. <laughs> literally, just put your finger near it and I freak. Uh, Jennifer says, read Full Brutal by Christopher Triana, and it had no real story. It was just a disgusting and gross marathon I managed to get through. So very different from this one, I would say. As soon as you said eyeball, I was out. (laughs) (laughs) I've read three Triana books now, and I think I'm done. Uh Uh-oh, that sounds bad. They All Died Screaming has a bunch of grossness as well. Get yourself a Ted Bundy, Lori, not a uh, Edmund. <laughs> yeah, I know. Look at Hello. this book. Oh, no. <laughs> how, do, how do you even pronounce that? I think it's Maeve Fly. Oh, sick. Oh, but, like, she's literally holding an eyeball and licking it on the cover. Help. <laughs> Lexi's like, haha, I want to disturb Kelsey now. Oh, I want to read the book. <laughs> Hi, I'm sorry I'm so late in getting to your comment. Ugh, I'm the worst. Funny thing, though, serial killers, there was a study that they had low IQs. So thinking all that and letters, um, thought that was, I'm sure, realistic because of the low IQ, I guess. Some have high IQs, though. So I think it just varies with IQ. In terms of killers and psychopaths and, I don't know, there's studies. I, I have not done a lot of research into that. Is that interesting? That's interesting. Is it a recent study? I've always heard high IQ, low EQ. I hated my sweet Audrina. Oh, okay. And it is a VC Andrews. Oh my God, I'm so behind. <laughs> I said that forever ago. VC Andrews, they use the R word so much. I think it was written in the 80s, so I'm not sure if this was acceptable. Oh my God. Yeah, that's terrible. The reason it was hard to catch a lot was that the FBI was thinking way above. They were thinking simple. I believe the study is still being done because of so many unknown serial killers. uh, And the simple kill. Even if the treatment of that person is super messed up. Yeah. Yeah. Looking that up when we're done here. So you're going to dive deep into that. Uh, original studies that were done, IQ were low. Also, some of these serial killers were placed in state psychiatric facilities for the rest of uh, their natural lives. Hi, all. Late. Hi, Deb. Sorry, I'm so late in getting your comment. Very much a product of its time in terms of language. Yeah. In terms of my sweet Audrina. 
The author did kind of try to justify that she could walk with the cane, saying there was a path to some extent before Buzz's. After that, they had to have the boat. Still a stretch, says Deb. Yeah. It's thrown around so much, and I didn't want to make excuses for the author about the VC Andrews book. Andrews was disabled herself, and I think was made to feel a certain way about it by her mother. I think it's reflected a lot in Audrina, but yeah, I really hated that book. Understandable. It's my first VC Andrews, and I feel like I'm reading a soap opera. That's what a lot of her books are like, said a lot of people I know who read it, read her stuff. Believe that people, people that believe in the paranormal also believe that running water increases activity. So there, so there's that. <laughs> Gone to see the river man is no exquisite corpse. Yeah, just to show you the difference, like Crystal loved exquisite corpse. It was like one of her favorite reads of last year, but she really doesn't like this book, Gone to see the river man. But I do think exquisite corpse is more extreme than Gone to see the river man. And also maybe more disturbing in ways too. So it's just crazy how uh, different when you compare it. Katie says, I just finished Reluctant Immortals and felt like that was literary horror. Come on I've not read that one. Come on Have up. you? No. Um, I didn't even, re like, I didn't realize what it was until, what are you doing? Um, until I looked it up when Katie finished it yesterday or the day before. <laughs> Oh my god, Katrina, yes. She's going to try to read Exquisite Corpse for Valentine's Day. That would be so appropriate because there is, like, a twisted love scenario and it's so effed up. It's so disturbing. I would- I cannot wait to hear what you think of it, Katrina. American Psycho Mary, I would call literary horror. Have you read Mary yet? No, I'm reading it very soon. Yeah, I thought- for some reason I kept thinking you have already read it for some reason. I started it and then didn't finish. Not I didn't DNF it. I started it for a video and then I decided I wasn't doing the video, so I stopped reading the book. Um, and I'm going to be reading it like this month or next month for a different video. Oh, cool! I can't wait to see what you think of that because I've heard you know mostly good things, but I'm I'm intrigued to see what you think. From what I read in the chat, it seems like seems only people with serious issues and an already problematic past are inclined to find the River Man. Yes. American Psycho is very literary, which is really weird that it's that way. Yeah, uh, Exquisite Corpse is one of Crystal's favorite books ever. Yeah, it was so wild. It was definitely an experience. I love The Reluctant Immortals. So nice to see Lucy Western and Bertha Rochester as main characters. I'm excited for Exquisite Corpse. I've been saving it because I have a feeling I'm going to love it. It is so brutal. American Psycho is a fave too. Not sure what that says about me. That's okay. I have messed up favorites as well. It's because you have strong Huey Lewis in the news opinions. It is hip to be square. <laughs> I'd hope so. I've been a square all my life. <laughs> Crossroads has one of my favorite endings. I cannot wait to read it. Crossroads is so good. Crossroads broke my heart. Y'all are making me want to read it. Suffer the Children is more sad than extreme. Child death is the main trigger, but it was excellent. That's good. I might check that one out. I have a feeling I'm going to like episode 13. We'll see. I'm going to read that first, of course. I think I love horror that isn't obvious. Like, the intent behind the fear is more emotional and not the typical slasher, creature, paranormal, etc. I really want to read Suffer the Children. Can you not? Oh, <laughs> He's Come getting up. into trouble again. Come up here. Get on the couch. I'm getting close to the end, kind of. Don't maybe. steal my taquito. <laughs> no taquitos for you. He was going for it. He was like this close. That's why I had to just like fall like, into him. You so will not it. take my taquitos. <laughs> <laughs> I hate reading on my phone. Oh my God, I know. Uh, it's just because you can get distracted so easily. Yeah. You can read scripts on like a desktop and stuff. I might do that sometimes. I wouldn't mind doing that versus my phone. Yeah. And it's bigger, too. Yeah. Me and Michelle are buddy reading Suffer the Children sometime this year. You should join us, Sherry. Oh, that's cool that y'all are buddy reading that. Like I said, I have a feeling I'm going to like episode 13. I don't want to speak too soon. But if I really like that one, I will definitely dig into his other book. You know, Suffer the Children. I think Suffer the Children is also the name of a vintage book. Or something so, uh, similar. I've... Am I wrong? But I think, like, a Peter... Is it Peter Straub or... 
Um, what's the other guy? The one that you have a lot of books by, Crystal, who have a lot of, like, child, children on the cover type of thing. So every time someone says Suffer the Children, I keep thinking of a vintage book, but I know it's not vintage. Um, Sherry is up for that. Just let me know when and I'm in, she says. Oh, that's cool. We got Buddy uh, Reads in the making. <laughs> Look at him. <laughs> Look, he's, he's, trying to, he's trying to, like, go around me, like... Because he wants my taquito. You're not getting the taquito. <laughs> you can't. Uh, I love how he's standing. Me. Get out of here. <laughs> you can't have it. Oh, my God. I love how persistent he is. <laughs> Female serial killer alert. Yeah, Mayfly looks so good. IQ is not the best way to measure intelligence, in my humble opinion. Agree. Eyeball seen in a, in a clockwork orange. Absolutely not. I will say, so I have been saying how messed up I am with books. I am a wuss when it comes to movies. I actually have been getting more and more of a wuss, or becoming more and more of a wuss, <laughs> uh, as my uh, life goes on. I don't know. I don't know why. But I love how in his in your face he is. <laughs> Uh, I feel I feel so bad for him. Um, another tangent. I had to take him to the vet today. He has an ear infection. Oh. He possibly has an eyelash growing, like uh, eyeball things for you. Oh. Um, like inside, like his eyeball things. So it's oh. like constantly poking his eye, and oh. he has super itchy skin. So he's now on three medications for the. Week. Oh. Poor thing. Yeah, I mean, Jackson's doing better, but he's still on one medication, but it's just allergies. I hope he feels better. That does suck. Yeah, so he might have to get surgery to remove his eyelash. Serious? It's it's like they can't just, like, pluck it? It'll just keep coming back. Oh, that freaking sucks. Mm -hmm. Oh my god, yes. Um, I will... Uh, Katrina, I'm seeing her comment about the movie. Uh, but I will say A Clockwork Orange is one of the movies that I will never watch. We had to watch the scene where an old couple, they, you know, S.A. is involved and mm -hmm. with this older lady. And we watched it, like I said, for a film class in school, just that scene. And I was like, I'm never watching this movie. So movies affect me way more than books. And I don't <laughs> know why. Visual is just like, it's just so different. I know. Can you just sit. <laughs> At least he's facing away from the taquitos. True. <laughs> I love eyeball stuff. Zombie has a great eyeball scene. Yes. And it's it's graphic. It's actually, it's cheesy, but graphic at the same time. It still made me uh, squeal and cringe, even though it's kind of cheesy in the way that it's executed. Ted Bundy was smart. I think Jackson just sneezed. Sorry <laughs> if you could hear that. Ted Bundy was smart and so was Ed Kemper. A lot of them were. The zombie eyeball scene is an all-timer. Yes, it is, like, brutal. It is so gross. Also, that whole movie is, like, a trip. Like, it's so zany. Oh, my God. Jackson is, like, spazzing out on the floor right now. He's, like, <laughs> and, like, making weird noises. I wish I could tilt my computer, but it won't. It probably won't reach that far down. Katie wouldn't call Mary literary. IQ tests have a dark history and are also incredibly racist. Used to pigeonhole people within the confines of standardized tests when everyone- I had to breathe for a second. <laughs> when everyone learns differently. Bunch of bullshit, honestly. Yeah, I feel like you can't really measure intelligence uh, very easily. I'm late, but I did just finish today. Hi, Michelle. Wow, what a book. I hate to say this, but thanks for the recommendation. I would have never read this. I'd give it a 3.5 to 4. Disturbing, but written well. <laughs> she's calling him Baxter again <laughs> yes John Saul thank you Lindsay yes I knew I was remembering and it is a book called Suffer the Children by John Saul so I keep mixing it up I think I have that book I have the Saul one but the other one was okay no Baxter <laughs> uh, is that and every plate to keto, Lexi, I can confirm the Chicago-style pork chop sandwich is a pain in the ass, but it's worth it. <laughs> I'm glad you enjoyed it. No, this is just a frozen taquito. Um, but I have gotten the taquitos from every plate before, and they're good. I'm so hungry right now. All I've had all day was, like, freaking 
a, I don't even know what kind of bar it was. It was like a breakfast bar. I'm freaking starving. <laughs> uh, that is exactly what I'm going to do. As soon as we get off, I'm like running to go make stir fry. I'm going to like literally sprint to the kitchen and be like, bitch, I'm coming to the, to the, um, what do you call it? The pan. Is Paul not home? He's not, but he's going to be coming home in like an hour or two, maybe. But yeah, like he would have already had dinner made and he would have brought it to me on a plate. Like a that, Yeah, that's why I was like, <laughs> I guess he's not there. When he's gone, um, I mean, he's coming home at least tonight, but he will be gone later in the week. And literally, I was like, I want to go to the grocery and get like sweets and like have a feast while you're gone. And he literally was like, if I buy you a king cake, a whole king cake, will it help you with me being gone? I'm like, yes. Please buy me. <laughs> so tomorrow he's buying me a king cake, and I have to try not to eat a whole king cake by myself. Because um, then I'll I just feel the, sad. The like, point even is for you to eat it all by yourself, though. That would be epic if I ate it all. I did eat half of because my parents we had a king cake at their house, and they gave me half of it, so they ate some. But I did eat a whole half the last time he was out of town. So can I eat a whole half, like a whole one, as opposed to a half? I believe in you. Oh my god. It's gonna be <laughs> epic. Can you imagine the sugar rush every day? Just eat for breakfast, lunch, and dinner king That's cake. So funny. See, I'm not looking forward to him being gone in terms of my meal planning. <laughs> because I need help, apparently. I'm not an adult. Me uh, neither. Andrew says, Well, at least you're eating taquitos and not like cake for dinner. Because I don't have cake. Well, I'm making him buy me cake <laughs> so that I could have it for like lunch. <laughs> it's so wrong. Anyway, Andrew says, my movie tastes are a lot more messed up. Like I'll watch Martyrs while eating breakfast with no reaction, but reading stuff like that gets me. I actually hate Clockwork Orange though. Yeah, I don't like, I mean, I have not watched the whole movie, but I can't. I know it's a book too, which I have also not I, read. I DNF'd the book. Oh, you tr You started it? Yeah. When? Like this was uh, before I had my channel. It was uh, probably in 2020. And I was like, no, nope. <laughs> For fun? Like you just picked it up? Yeah, I was trying to figure out what I liked. And it was one that I just like recognized the title of. I didn't read the synopsis. I just like borrowed it from the library. And I started it and I was like, uh, nope. <laughs> so was the beginning like really messed up? It was just, like, a bunch of violence, I think. And, like, I... Not in a fun way. So, I don't know. Now I'm going to keep this comment up for an uncomfortably <laughs> long time <laughs> as well. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, So I'll just read the rest and, and leave Andrew's up. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't like Clockwork Orange, says Sherry. But that eyeball scene stuck with me. Um, I just remembered the shark fight in Zombie. Oh my god, yes. That part is so, it would be epic, but it's so ridiculous that she's like topless and almost bottomless. And she's literally, oh wait, no wait, that's a zombie. Well, she's down there, then a zombie's down there, and then a shark's down there. So like a nearly naked lady's down there, a zombie is down under the water, and a shark is down there. And is literally fighting with a zombie. And it was filmed with a real ass shark. Really? Yeah. Oh my gosh. I think, am I wrong, guys? I think I uh, read, I mean, you could tell it's real because it's literally like latched onto the dude, his arm, but like, you know, he's, the actor must have had some kind of protection, like chain mail under his zombie makeup or something. I don't know. Does anyone know how that scene was done? Because it blew my mind that it actually exists. I've never seen it. Are we surprised? No. <laughs> you have to see it because it's so weird. It's very weird. <laughs> I should make it, well, I mean, you're busy in April, but I should make it as one of my movie watch parties for old school April. Because it is old school. But yeah, I don't like how, like, this woman's just, like, going in the water and she's, like, no clothes on. I'm like, come on, lady, put on some clothes. <laughs> <laughs> Not that I'm approved, but it was just, like, so, like, eye roll, it didn't need to be there. Kemper was, oh, man, I took down Andrew's comment. Damn it, I better put it back up. I didn't mean to do that. Where is it? Wait, I lost it. I thought he was. I thought he deleted it. Okay, good. I'm leaving it up again. Even right, if anyway. he deleted it, we can still see it. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, it's true. It does stay up on StreamYard on our end. Yeah. Kemper was by far the smartest, uh, 165 IQ, but the most average 120. Again, like I don't think IQ is a great way of measuring things. 
Uh, Andrew says the shark fight is funny in Zombie. I DNF'd, I DNF'd A Clockwork Orange, the movie, right at the same essay scene. Nope, says C. Crits Reed. I know. Mm. Clockwork Orange book is super Christian. Haha. -ha. I've only seen Martyrs twice and I own it. That shit's rough. <laughs> I wasn't a clock. Wasn't A Clockwork Orange written with a lot of Cockney accents? I remember it being horrible to read because of that. I DNF a long time ago. Yeah, I barely remember anything other than I did not like it. I didn't make it very far into it, but I was like, mm, no. This is worth putting up, though. You're hardcore, Andrew. <laughs> You're hardcore. <laughs> and he's like, I am really not. <laughs> All I know is that they drugged the shark. Oh my god, no! That's so mean. Not that I'm like, like, you know, sharks don't really need people like going to their defense since they're like at the top of the food chain, but I don't like animals being like abused. Yeah. They're still an animal. Like, they still, like, it's their ocean, you know? Yeah. I like sharks. I like, they're my favorite animal, but like, you know. I'm not going to go pet one or anything, but I would like to dive in a shark I gonna, lake. I was going to ask if you would ever do that. I would, but, like, the idea of it frightens me to no end. But I think it'd be, like, a bucket list fun thing. But, like, this is the crazy part. They can hear your freaking heartbeat, Lexi. They, oh. like, have a sense where they can hear, like, vibrations. So even though you might be silent, even though you might be under there, like, they'll hear your bubbles from your tank, your what, your air tank. They're, mm -hmm. They'll he hear your heartbeat. It's just so creepy. It's creepy. Mm -hmm. Why do I have a British accent in your mind? I know, I was going to say something, Wait. but then you, you like, very quickly moved on to the next comment, so I was just, like, laughed about it. To Did myself. I make you sound British? Yeah, whenever you um said, um I really, I, I am really not, it was in a British <laughs> accent. I don't know why. I'm turning into Sev over here. <laughs> I love her accents that she does, like, in her voices. It's the best. It always makes me laugh. Amy's laughing at the British accent thing. I think Incident in Ghostland is more disturbing than Martyrs, but it does have a lot of problematic stuff. I'm terrified of the ocean, like, won't even go near it. Paul doesn't like the ocean either, and I love the ocean, but I am scared. I used to be scared in a swimming pool. Like, I, as a kid, like, sometimes you feel like something's under there with you. I don't know if anyone else ever felt that way, but I was like, ew. I was stung by a jellyfish really badly whenever I was a kid, so I'm scared to get in the ocean now, but I, I love being there. Yeah, like on the beach or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, there's a, there's nothing like a good beach, just being on the sand, seeing the waves, hearing the, the water going like that, crashing. Andrew is British now. <laughs> yeah. Oi, mateys, bangers and mash. <laughs> I still I thought, never. I thought never, Old Ladies was a pirate. Yeah, I know. I thought so too. Oh, <laughs> uh, maybe that's Ahoy. That's Ahoy. Never mind. Oh, so wait. <laughs> Oi is British. Have you ever heard Ollie say Oi? We got to get him to say Oi. And yo. I never got him to say yo yet. That's so funny. <laughs> Kelsey will always be baby doll voice for me. Sometimes it just pops in my head. That's so funny. Um, that is funny. Bangers and Mash is Scottish, actually. Wow, really? I didn't know that. I have no idea. Love the beach, but I hate the ocean. It grosses me out. There is a lot of waste, which sucks that we have polluted the ocean so bad. I thought Kelsey was about to say, they can hear your thoughts and put on a tinfoil hat, like signs. <laughs> All British are pirates. <laughs> Proper British pirate. <laughs> I thought it was Irish. <laughs> no! I have no idea. I don't know either. Um, <laughs> bangers and Mash. I thought it was British, personally. But I don't know. Maybe it's all of them. Chips and crisps. <laughs> now I'm just using weird, like, tones and stuff. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, guys, uh, to kind of segue away from the book, because I think we discussed a lot. I mean, this is, like, one of the longest book club chats, but it's so easy to talk to Lexi. <laughs> so <laughs> it's just easy to have a long chat in general. So, guys, thanks for chilling with us. But I will remind everyone, Lexi is linked below. Please, 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 please follow her channel <laughs> if you aren't already. She is marvelous, does lots of sprints, as I said. She has her own book club. And also... She has a Patreon, so check that out because she's got lots of great bonuses, which I think is really cool, admirable, awesome. You should support her because she is amazing. 
And see, I didn't make you talk about your channel today, so. I know. <laughs> I thought you were being nice enough to co-host with me. I would talk about your channel for you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Um, but yes, she is linked below, so make sure you go and sub to her if somehow you aren't already. Also, if anyone's interested, my book club pick for this month of February is Swan Song by Robert McCammon. It is a huge yeah. chunker. But we're not talking about the book till the second week of March. So you got lots of time, even if you started like after now. I already am 170 pages or so in, and it's freaking fantastic. It's amazing. It's wonderful. I'm loving it. I cannot see how it won't be an amazing, perfect read. So I would wow. say if you guys are intrigued, even though it's long, take the plunge. Come on. Lexi? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I know you're like, I'm not reading that. <laughs> oh, it's so long. I know, but the, the audiobook's pretty good. Is it on Scribd? I actually don't know if it's on Scribd. It might only be on Audible, because a lot of his stuff, not a lot, but some of his stuff is Audible exclusive. Mm -hmm. Does anyone know if it's on Scribd? I don't know if it is. I, well, I know the ebook is on Kindle Unlimited. <laughs> Sherry says, stop punching us, Kelsey. It's me trying to do ASMR <laughs> with my fist instead of a shoe. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Thank you for hanging, Helco, by the way. This was great. Thank you for your opinions, Andrew. I love getting other opinions than... Um, just one, you know, type of opinion. So I really value you and Crystal's opinions. Uh, and you guys might feel like you're in the minority, but we love to hear what you think. Um, and I totally understand your feelings. And I appreciate you guys being so vulnerable enough to like, even though you weren't, you know, in the majority, I really admire that you guys still were like, I'm going to still say my opinion, even though it doesn't match with everyone else. Because I think that's important. Did you, did you see if it's on script yet? Um, no, but it, the book is on Kindle Unlimited, and it's 929 pages. I know. But I gotta say, it's, like, reading so fast. Like, I felt like the 150 pages was faster than the 150 pages. That's just me, though, for Gone to See the River Man. This one took me a while to read. It took me longer to read this than it normally would to read a book this length. I know. Me, too, and I don't know why that is. Yeah. Sherry says, fine, we'll read it, because I kept punching her and stuff. <laughs> Metaphorically, not literally. Uh, reading Swan Song now, and I'm so excited. I hope you're enjoying it so far, Amy. I know I saw on the Discord you were, but I don't know how much further in you got since then. Because I think that was like two nights ago. I can't remember. Uh, Amy says it was fun. Thanks for the discussion. Thank you for your thoughts, Amy. I loved hearing how you enjoyed it and why. And thank you for letting me read your, even though you didn't really technically get permission. <laughs> thank you for letting me put you on the spot and read your review. I'm so excited for Swan Song. I got the audio, says Katrina. By the way, are you still planning on reading the other, Lexi? Or no? Mm -hmm. You are, but um, you don't have a time for, like a set time for it. I'm going to read it sooner than later because I have to read Rosemary's Baby and it's going to be in the same video as that. Like, Rosemary's Baby is on my February TBR. Oh, because um, Katrina, Katie, uh, Crystal, and also I think Kelly are all buddy reading the other. But you won't be, you probably won't have gotten to Rosemary's Baby at the same time or before. We're starting around the 10th. Hmm. I'll let you know. Yeah, because uh, you're welcome if you want to. I can invite you to the group. I just, for some reason, when Katrina said she was excited for Swan Song, I also remember that we're reading the other together as well. <laughs> and it made me think of, I remember you saying you wanted to read it. And so I wanted to mention it before I forgot. How long is it? Yeah, like Lexi said, 929 pages. Um, but honestly, like, I know I'm going to get heat for this from Stephen King lovers, but I feel like his long books read faster than Stephen King's long books. And I, I I can't explain it. I just feel like there's not as much fluff. Now, I'm not saying that it's like that with every one of his books compared to Stephen King's, but I'm just saying as an author, I like his style so much more than Stephen King's style. And I'm not saying, I like Stephen King. I mean, I've rated his books five People stars. People are going to come for you. They're I are going to come for you in this two hour long live show about a different book for your opinion. <laughs> Even my best friend Kat will be like, I went to the end of your chat and saw what you said about King and I'm coming for you. And I'm like, oh shit. Yeah, oh, it's audible only. Oh, I'm sorry, guys. I use one of my credits because I think using credits for long books is, you know, it's Oh, yeah. It. Yeah. 
and also sometimes libraries like i mean if it's audible is it even if um, it's audible exclusive i don't think um even libraries oh really yeah that's annoying that sucks i didn't know that but i figured i guess that might be the case that sucks just finished Boy's Life, and now I'm thinking of Swan Song. Boy's Life! It's like my Wait, favorite what book. did you rate Boy's Life? Because I know you weren't loving it. <gasps> she wasn't loving it? Oh, no. I think she was considering DNFing it at one no! point. No! I wasn't going to... I almost Not thought about too. putting it for your Patreon. Like, you know how you have people can suggest yeah. something for your jar or whatever? Um, I thought about putting Boy's Life, but I was too scared, and I said no. And then I was like, what can I put? And I still haven't thought of anything. I mean, you can put Boy's Life if you want. It's fine. No, I'm scared. I don't want you to almost DNF it. There's been some worse things in there, so. And then I would cry. No, I wouldn't cry. I would understand if you didn't like it. But, like, almost everyone I know has liked it. <laughs> except for Lindsay, apparently. Okay, 4.5. Okay, so I guess oh. it, got, it got better. Oh, okay. That's not bad. <coughs> okay, you scared me. You thought, I thought she was going to end up giving it a one. No, not a one. <laughs> uh, I had to get on Audible. Yeah, as Crystal says, Audible only. Should have got the audio. Yeah, the audio is really good. I, I'm enjoying the audio. How long it's, is the audio? It's long, but your speed, it would be under... Like, I actually slowed down the audio because I was enjoying it so much. So instead of speeding it up, I slowed it down to take my time with it. And, like... um. So I started off at like 2.5 and it was like saying 14 hours, but like three? Say so you went at this three. That's 34 hours and 19 minutes. Yeah, but at three times speed or something, like you go crazy. Yeah, but I could listen to three books during that time. Yeah, but like this could be like the book that you remember. Like, I don't know. Maybe I'll think about it. Maybe I do, not. Though. I do. Um, I, I wanted to cancel Audible because I only got it whenever I, there was a discount. So I was planning on canceling it anyway, but I need to use my credit. So we'll see. I know it's intimidating, but like it's really reading like honestly super fast. Like I can't explain it, but some shorter books have felt longer to me than what I've already read in Swan Song. And I can't explain why. Audible loves to put Robert McCammon on sale. So make sure you watch their sales. Yeah, they do put him on sale a lot. Amy mm. said it was only $8 if you have KU. Swan Song is on there. I don't even know what this book is about. What, Swan Song? Yeah. <laughs> it's post, like, there's, a, like, a big nuclear war, mm -hmm. and then, like, all these people have to survive, but I think there's, like, I haven't gotten very far to where there might be shit going down with, like, creatures or something. I don't know. Mm. But, like, people being shitty, and then I think there's more going on than just people being shitty i think there's more going to hell than that there's a, well there is like this guy um who seems kind of like a devilish character not really a spoiler it's kind of on the back of the book and he is creepy so yeah i'm liking it a lot i do like post apocalyptic post apocalyptic so yeah and it seems to be a very good one like the descriptions like i could picture the way he's describing like how the United States and different places would be after like a nuclear fallout essentially. And it's really sad, um, but also very powerful, which is easy to picture the way he writes it. Yeah. I just read not a in a boring way. I just read a post-apocalyptic book that the average rating on Goodreads was 2.7. Is that for your um your vlog you're working on? I forgot what you were saying it was. Like um I'm working on a bunch of different vlogs. I thought it was like reading low rated books or something. No. It just happened. I didn't know it was that. I didn't pick the book. <gasps> like, I, did you hate it or is it a surprise? I didn't hate it. Okay. I can't wait to see what you actually thought of it, which will be in some video at some point. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Crystal, again, for sharing your opinions. That really means a lot to me that you were here. Um, oh, yeah. So um, Katrina says, let everyone know about the other Lexi. If you want to read it with us, just let her know and DM her. Okay. Going to start Swan Song after I finish the new Grady book. I finished and loved the new Grady book. What'd you rate it? Five four? stars. Oh, wow. Did you not rate it five? I rated it four. Oh. I mean, I, I think, I will, to be fair, I think it could have been like a four for me. However, I just love Grady, so I'm a little biased. So to me, it's like, it doesn't feel wrong to bump him up to a five. I guess it no. did kind of read more like a 4.5 or a four. Like, it's not... Like, I know you don't like My Best Friend Exorcism, but that is my very favorite, Grady. So it's not to that level for me. 
but it was still enjoyable and it was still like a great, very grady book. So it was, yeah. it was a, a fun experience. Um, I know we're just like, we're just here forever, apparently. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry, I know. I know. No, I was going to start talking about Grady Hendrix. Go ahead, um, talk about him. So he, whenever he signs books, he has stamps for specific books. So um, like he has like, pentagrams for my best friend's exorcism and bats for um southern book club's guide so i saw somebody that got a signed copy today um of um the new one and the um oh hang on it's on someone's story so it's like this is the the little stamp he puts on <gasps> Oh my god, that like basically confirms what I think it's really about, like what I think the book is an uh, ode to. Oh. Because there's this vintage book that Grady Hendrix really, really likes. I can't really say like the exact thing it's an ode to because it might be a spoiler. Mm -hmm. well, kind of, but not really, because whatever. I mean, as you can see from that stamp, there are toys in the book. The mom collects dolls and toys. I don't think that's a spoiler, is it? No. Well, anyway, the Book Toy Cemetery has dolls and toys, but not a lot. Not as much as it should. I feel like Grady Hendrix was like, let me redo <laughs> Toy Cemetery in a less batshit crazy way, with better writing, with better characters, and with more toys. That's what I feel like. And none of that's really a spoiler, but I feel like um, the new book from him is almost like an, a nod to Toy Cemetery by William Johnstone, because he's so adamant about how much he loves that book in terms of how batshit crazy it is and it's one of his big examples of how vintage horror is like balls to the wall wild so that is why i think it's almost like his way of making a more sensible story out of like some of the ideas in toy cemetery but not like all of the ideas because toy cemetery has some insane stuff like like a lot of weird uh speaking of incest like this book it's got insane incest stuff that is like way more disturbing hmm because it's not brother and sister, it's it's worse. And it's, it's ter just trust me, it's terrible. Uh, but it's also like, where it's like a car crash where you can't look away. Mm. I put an alien book in her jar. Oh my God, yes. Yeah, I was, I looked it up. Cause I'm like, is this like the movie thing? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, I, I hope you draw his soon. Oh my God, oh my God. I added a bunch of new prompts to my game, so I think I'm going to... I only put one Patreon one in there, but I think I'm going to put two so that it comes up, like, more frequently. Because I don't want it to be like I get one every five months. Yeah. So. But yeah. I, um, I still have to brainstorm about what I want to do. I could do Boy's Life, but I could... I don't know. Whatever. We'll see. I have to think on it a little bit longer. My library has Swan Song, and I just placed my hold. I'm so excited. Yay. I'm canceling. I'm guessing you mean Audible after you get Project Hail Mary and The Martian. So, oh, my God. The so she's about to read it. Another the, favorite. The Project Hail Mary audiobook is so good. And it, I can't tell you why, but it's important. Wait, Andrew, did you read Project Hail Mary yet? I know it was on your one TBR. Yeah, I never heard him talk about it, though. So, if you did read it, did you dislike it and you're trying to keep it secret from Lexi? <laughs> it's fine. Amy DNF'd it, so. I know. I saw her worst reads of the year, or, <laughs> or her least favorites, and she mentioned that she DNF'd it. And I was like, oh my god, Lexi's probably dying. But uh, Amy says, um, so Swan Song is good versus evil post-apocalyptic. And that, that is how it is right off the bat, basically, almost. Where you could definitely tell that. Crystal is zipping through the audio for Swan Song. I listened to it all day today at work. I'm so happy. Yay. Yeah, it's so easy to listen to. I don't know why it's, like, so easy. I got an old paperback as well, but not the one I wanted. I'm guessing you mean of Swan Song. Or, oh, of the other, maybe? I don't know which one you mean. Oh, uh, I have uh, my copy is the whole way up there. Uh, my copy, I'm just going to use a digital copy of the other. With the sprayed edges. Oh, I wish I wish I had that. I got this on Pango. Oh, really? Yeah. I got this and Rosemary's Baby from the same person. And they both have sprayed edges. 
Very so fun. fun. Oh my god. I, I won't like, I'm just gonna read like I said the digital copy, but you wouldn't um think that I wouldn't have that. Like you would think that I would have it, is what I should say. <laughs> I can't speak today. But uh because you know I own so many vintage horror books, but I don't own that one somehow. Yeah. I mean, I can like someone clearly did this the sprite edges on their own because it like leaked into the book. Oh really? Like or the yeah, like that's or it's just that old and there's water damage, maybe. Yeah, that's I don't true. Know. I don't They're know. They're just the old books are not made as, you know, we're not made to the level that the books are made today. Like they fall apart so easy, it's scary. Yeah. yeah How to so sell like, a haunted house is uh Sherry's favorite Grady, Hendrix book. Wow. I got the UK cover of that. I know we uh, you've all only showed me like a picture of it. Do you have like the physical? Cool. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, I do too. It's um smaller than I thought it was going to be, but it was fine. Doll stamps as well, says Katrina, that he has. Cool. Thank you, Crystal. I'm sure you're gone already, but good night. I want to read that now and compare. <laughs> Amy, like, take that with a grain of salt because Toy Cemetery, it's way worse written, but it is an experience, but there is really gross, like, relationships between, like, kids and adults in that. But it's, like, brought on by a supernatural. Just trust me. You got to experience because w whenever you get to reading Paperbacks from Hell, Grady Hendrix kind of uh, documents the plot of the book. He almost gives away the entire plot, almost, of Toy Cemetery in his book, Paperbacks from Hell. But, again, it's still worth reading. It is on Kindle. It is just batshit crazy. And then you'll be left thinking, like, what did I just read? None of the plot stuff makes sense. Like, it doesn't connect together, but it is still fun. And I know, yeah, Toy Cemetery is on Katrina's 23 books for 2023. And I cannot wait to see what she thinks. Because she's going to be like, what did I just read? It's so <laughs> weird. Slash bad. The one main character had an Elmo voice in my head while I was reading How to Sell a Haunted House. Like, that is funny. An Elmo voice. It is honestly one of my absolute favorite books. I swear it's good. You mean Project Hail Mary? No, I think... Oh, It, like by Stephen King? The, yeah, I think because you were bashing Stephen King. Kelsey hates Stephen... No, I don't hate Stephen <laughs> King. I like It. I've, I've, I've read It and I enjoyed It. I haven't <laughs> read It. I'm scared. It is long. It's yeah. actually... So let's put it this way. I feel like It feels like a longer read than Swan Song. And I'm Maybe that will change as I get further into Swan Song, but like sometimes I felt like I was doing great with it. And then I was like, there's 400 pages left. Yeah. <laughs> and it felt like there was 400 pages left. Like it felt yeah. like sometimes it just lagged a little bit. Oh, I got books delivered. Ooh, good night, Katrina. We're about to go too because I'm hungry. Lexi and I vibe. So I'm sure I'll love paper. Uh, I mean, uh, Project Hail Mary. <laughs> I cannot talk. Um, no, no, I'm getting through some library books first, so it'll be next very soon. I'm looking forward to Project Hail Mary. Don't, I don't shield my opinions if I hate something. I know. I'm just pulling your leg. I have an old hardcover copy of the other, and it has a, has black sprayed edges. Oh, that's cool. Can you share a picture in the Discord, Sherry, in, um, my Discord? And Lexi's too, if you want. I just want to see. I'm in, I'm in yours too, so wherever. The alien um, book. Interesting. Oh, okay. he was not talking about Stephen King today. <laughs> I was talking about the Alien book. Oh, okay. Oh, wait, so that's the same one you recommended for me? Is that the same one, Andrew? We might have to buddy read it together if it's the same book. Yeah, it was... I forget. I have it, I mean, in the... Mine is on my spreadsheet somewhere. I mean, he could just tell us. Yeah, tell us, Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ordering him to tell us. Like, it's kind of bossy. You know what I mean. Yeah. <sighs> Oh my god, I'm still getting work emails at 7.04. Leave me alone! Well, now it's 8.05, but so I got was was getting them an hour ago. At least I don't have any more recent ones than that. Oh, it is the same one. Yeah, but what's it called? Oh, Alien the Cold Forge. Okay. Uh, cool. Okay. We should read it together. I was thinking of maybe uh, August for Garb August. Hmm. I'm not saying it's trash, Andrew. I'm just saying it's like a you know, fun, pulpy, like, you know, movie tie-in that yeah. some people might consider trashy. I'll have to read it whenever it's picked for my game. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, that's, I forgot. You have to read it whenever it comes up. You can't just mm -hmm. choose when you read it. Damn it! Yeah. It would have been perfect for August. Maybe, maybe I'll just, like, I'll, I'll fudge the game. Or maybe I'll just read it whenever you read it. We'll see. It just depends on if it's on a crazy month or not. 
yeah. All right, guys. Well, I think we're wrapping up. I want to thank everyone for hanging. I know it's been like a two hour chat, but I just can't <laughs> help it. It's so much fun talking with Lexi. It's like sprints, but we're talking about a book specifically. So it still worked out to be fun. Thank you so much for hanging, Lexi. I appreciate you. Of course. Glad to be All right, here. guys. Uh, thanks for reading with me. And again, if anyone's interested in Swan Song, check over uh, at my Discord. There's discussion going on right now. There is ways to hide spoilers, so have no fear. Again, the audio is on Audible. The book is long, but I do recommend the style of it so far. Lexi, I'm trying to convince you so hard right now. <laughs> anyway, never mind. I'm just kidding. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you again. Bye. Have a good one and keep on killing it. Bye, guys. <laughs>